I've got some of the old style um, Citadel colour inks. Um, you know, I've got a brown here, and I'm just going to pop a bit into this uh, old jar lid. Just a slight bit right in the middle. So, yeah, these inks are really old school, these ones are well over, I think, 10, 15 years or so. Yeah, so I've got the brown there, I'm going to take our figure and I'm just going to pop it here. Let's take the brush. I'm just going to pop a bit onto there. I'm just going to thin a bit off. Now I'm going to go, don't like a bit of a colour wash, but I'm going to thin it with a bit of water. So I'll just get a bit more on there. I want some of these areas to be coloured in. If you can see that there. No. Let's get a bit more. There we go. It starts to fill in the you know the line areas underneath there and don't worry if it goes over because we can do some highlights on that and really make this especially all the raised areas to stand out do a bit of the head as well I always like to start with the darkest colour first and then as we go along we can do the lighter colours So we've got some like shade there and we'll just continue on with the skin colour and just see how it goes. So as you can see I've uh, shaded uh, that skin colour with the brown ink and it sort of made it really dark but that's the effect I wanted to make because together with highlights and other areas we can make it a lot better. Now we can continue to uh, colour wash other areas now. Uh, I like to do all this stage at the same time, you know, uh, so you, you're going along and then once you've nearly, near enough covered all your miniature, it's time to do the details right at the end. That's what I like to do. And I like to highlight that sword, um, you know, with a dry brush technique, uh, usually at the end as well, because that's usually classed as a detail. So, cracking on now. Um, we've got some chestnut ink there, I'm going to apply that to uh, the orange areas there and maybe the red areas and just see how that takes and then we can add some glaze effects later. So, And so we've done some chestnut ink on the orange areas there and it's, uh, it's sort of like blending that red and that orange together now and they'll become sort of similar like uh, brown colours uh, once I start the glazing process uh, I've still got to shade the red um, with some like uh, mixed uh, brown brown paint I think with a bit of that brown ink on there so we're just uh, steadily catching up with this uh, figure now uh, I'm going to apply some more colour washes, maybe some purple ink to the uh, leg areas and maybe some black ink on the green areas uh, in fact we'll do that next and then we'll come back and see where we are and carry on with this uh, figure tutorial which is going to have many parts uh, until I learn how to um, maybe compact uh, video file size more effectively. So see you on the next bit. And so I've added purple ink uh, to the worm purple on the legs and the salamander green I've added uh, a brown ink just to help suggest some shadow there which I'll probably do further shadows with uh, proper black paint 
just to just to help bring it all together and so now we're going to concentrate on this red area and that shoulder pad uh, giving it some shade and going from there really and then we'll try and bring some bring some of this figure together uh, with the paint and you know just try and you know because as you've noticed this isn't isn't a typical um, uh, from the box painting uh, I've decided to do my own colours because uh, I don't like copying off other people's work so I just like to do my own colours um, especially for this Nagel um, character so we're getting the uh, all the rotten colours uh, down to a T so we'll see how this goes as we progress with the next part of this video and so I've decided to shade these area, um, these red areas with purple ink um, because it's it's a good colour to choose because when you come to glazing over with uh, probably like yellows and you know a few oranges here and there it can create a nice effect and plus the purple acts as a nice shading colour for this area as well so it's pretty good still under there just make sure like the ink you know all the water down paint goes into all the recesses and just really helps to add the illusion of shadow so if you can see it properly there but there's there is um, shade on them areas and that looks quite nice uh, I'm gonna do that skull and like uh, knee pad things I've got to color them I'll add them as well and then we'll come back and then we'll uh, look at other areas that we can colour wash and shade and really bring this uh, figure together 